Hello there, uh, it's me Tom again with a, another tutorial. I know it's been a little while, but uh, I've been at uni and uh, doing some commission work for people and stuff, so I haven't really had the time to make new and interesting sounds for the channel. But um, we're here today with another serum sound. Um, it's the sound you just heard, obviously. It's this kind of sweep effect sound um, that I was making for a piece of radio music. And... Uh, yeah, it's honestly dead simple. Um, I debated the necessarily the necessity of doing a tutorial on it, um, but you know I thought I haven't done a lot of serum videos, so I thought I'd jump in and uh, do it. So um, it literally just runs off this uh, noise oscillator, and uh, there's some effects there that you can see, and uh, yeah, um, I modulated the pitch of the noise oscillator a little bit in my piece as well. Um, although it's just turned itself off because I pressed it. Wonderful. Uh, but yeah, uh, dead simple. So we're just going to jump in and uh, start. So we're here in the initial uh, Serum startup screen here. First thing we want to do is turn off that oscillator because we ain't using those. Um, we'll put the filter on and set it to the noise uh, selection here. Uh, just the, just the noise oscillator being input to it. Turn on the noise oscillator, obviously, and we're going to set it to let's just do it properly bright white. Now there's loads of settings in the uh, Serum noise oscillator, so I actually think that if you went through and tried all of these, that you could uh, come up with some pretty interesting results. But uh, bright white is the one that I settled on for this piece, so I, it's I think it's probably one of the brightest sounds in here. I'm you know I'm not massively familiar with Serum just yet, but uh, it seems like it had a lot of high frequency content compared to the ones that I tried. Um, so we're gonna set the phase to about sort of 14 here and uh, a little bit of random in there as well. This actually has quite a dramatic effect on the sound. So um, actually if we bring up the level. Um, so you can actually hear it. You can hear as I roll this around. That actually has a pretty dramatic effect on the sound. Um, so just be careful with that. Apologies, by the way, for sniffing and stuff. I do have a bit of a cold. Um, anyway, so next up, uh, we're going to look at the uh, pitch dial here, um, which I set to about here. This thing is actually kind of modulated by uh, an awful lot of... Um, like envelopes, uh, in this case actually, I was going to say LFOs, but it's envelopes. Um, so we're going to start with uh, envelope 3, map it to our pitch dial here, and uh, these settings uh, you're going to kind of want to be quite similar to mine, I would imagine. Um, obviously there is like a bit of room for uh, flexibility here, but what I'm saying is it kind of has quite a dramatic input on the sound and uh, I, don't, I think actually what I'd say is uh, like the decay settings and the attack settings you're going to want to kind of appropriate to stuff like your tempo um, and just you know generally how long you want the kind of build up and uh, bring down of the sweep to be. I've gone for um, actually about seven seconds of attack here and uh, full sustain and actually just a uh, solid second of decay so if you see what you can see it looks like that um, and when it came to release I put about three seconds worth of release on here as well and um, that's actually it for just the pitch dial uh, for now um, we will dial in the modulation settings but I'll do that later uh, so we use the second envelope here for uh, the filter uh, now the filter should be in type LN12, is it? Yes, so this is like a multi uh, band. I want to say band pass. I mean, I think, I mean, the top end of this is clearly a, clearly a low pass, but um, we want to bring this frequency, second frequency here to about here. We're adding a good amount of drive here uh, to really emphasize the bits of the sound that we do keep in. And since we're going to be modulating this with an envelope, adding drive. 
uh, really kind of emphasizes the difference between what you've cut and what you've got left. Um, so we're going to modulate this cutoff with envelope two. So the settings for this, I would again keep fairly similar to uh, well, well, it's basically the point is is you've got to keep it kind of similar to the to the other envelope here because uh, you know you want the motion to match. You don't want the kind of the rise of the pitch to happen and then you not actually be able to tell that much because you've filtered your high end away. You know, um, so again, I've gone for about seven or eight seconds of attack here. Um, you can kind of adjust the difference to taste it, but again, you know they've got to be pretty close. I, I would say to achieve the effect. Um, so, and then we're going to add actually a bit more decay on this. Uh, probably about five seconds worth here, but um, we're going to bring the sustain down to about thirty percent, thirty-four ish. That kind of that kind of place, um, and I'm going to change the the roller for this uh, just before I send it all the way up. I'm just going to change this, and then we can knock the decay out a bit longer. Um, and because this is the filter, as I say, I was more concerned about the attack of this, uh, but you know the roll off doesn't really matter as much as the pitch because. Uh, you know what mattered was getting the high frequencies unfiltered, but you know as the lows go down, maybe this kind of moves down a bit slower. It, I mean, with the sweep, uh, kind of my lower elements have come in sort of here, so you know I've kind of already got all this low frequency energy. So kind of knocking out this kind of band was quite good because you know that's typically where like my kick sounds are, my bass sounds. So you know maybe it's kind of practical to have those filtered out. Uh, so I think you can adjust this to taste, particularly the whole kind of uh, slooping this off. Um, so while we're here, we will cover the first envelope, which obviously controls the uh, ADSR of just the whole synth. So we've got just 0.5 seconds of attack here. We're not, you know, we're not trying to add any more attack uh, to the sound because obviously we've got things happening here and we want to be able to hear them. So having the volume kind of quiet here. Uh, is isn't really useful i mean there will be times when you might want that to happen but i'd suggest using other sources of automation to do it so uh you know other filters or just uh, a plugin a mixing plugin on top just to automate your gain um because having this envelope set up the same way every time is quite nice if you want to trigger it multiple times uh having a, an attack on on the main didn't seem particularly practical so we've added about 15 seconds of decay to this, uh, which is obviously quite a lot. Um, and actually, before I do that, I'm going to bring the sustain down to nothing, uh, add about three seconds worth of release, and uh, just change this kind of... This was a real pain in the ass, uh, if I'm honest. So that is about where I want it. But I had this kind of problem of like, well, I want these things happening here, and I've started to turn them down, so maybe I have to drag this all up. But then it doesn't seem to ever end. Uh, so this was a bit of a, a bit of a pain. Uh, but I think this is the kind of happy spot for it for me at least. You might find that actually is really annoying, and you might just chuck the decay all the way up and have it go on, uh, and have another way of kind of having the sound end. But for me, this was the solution that I came up with. Um, but yeah. I don't think it mattered too much in the end, but uh, it was certainly something that kind of felt wrong um, and I just had to be careful with. So we're going to move on to the... Actually, we'll do that modulation wheel. Uh, so this modulation wheel one here is mapped to our pitch, and the way this is done is sent in both directions. Um, and it's actually all the way up. So if we go back and look at it, you can see now that this will control it. So, uh, you know, we'll leave it about here so it's where it's supposed to be. But uh, that allowed me to kind of have it, you know, a higher pitch and then a lower pitch and even drag the pitch down as it was playing out. So it's a useful tool. We'll go to the effects section now. Uh, we're going to start off with a hyper dimension effect here, which is essentially a spacing tool. Um, so we're going to bring the mix down here actually quite low. And uh, this mix is actually controlled by the envelope as well. So the, the kind of useful part of setting up these two envelopes was that um, 
any kind of any other effect that I wanted to apply this this uh, sweeping motion to. I'm trying to draw it out my hands, but you can't see my hands. Uh, this sweeping motion, you know, I've already got it programmed in, and I can make sure it's you know mapped in the same way. Um, and it's all about you know creating that motion when you press the the key, which is why you know sweeps are actually quite fun to make because uh, you, you've done a lot of the work already, kind of thing. So uh, adding effects on top is just pretty easy. Um, so yeah, these settings are pretty much fine. Uh, you might want to turn the rate down a little bit. Again, depends on kind of the tempo and the and the taste. But uh, that's where I put mine. Not distortion. Thank you. Uh, I did put a phaser on because I actually love the phasers. Uh, I want to say in Serum, but actually just in general at the moment, they are like one of my favorite things to use. So I'm a little bit biased. It's just one of those things. And uh, I mapped the third envelope here to the rate so that it kind of gets faster when it's peaked up here. You know, it's, it's going crazy. And then it can just be kind of chill around the lower spots of our envelope. Um, so I mixed that in just a little bit less there because it was all the way up and I didn't think that was appropriate. Um, and I dialed back the phase and the depth Actually, I put forward as well. Ah, okay. I also had, uh, I think, yeah, I also had a delay on it, and uh, this is very basic. I just mounted a bit of feedback here and turned on the mix just a little bit, but it was uh, mostly because of the problems I was having with this. Uh, it didn't sound very natural falling off, and you know, delay is kind of a cheap trick to uh, make sure that it sounds proper. And you know what else is good? Reverb. Uh, reverb is obviously excellent for giving stuff an artificial release um, and just kind of in general sweeps and reverb seems to mix together really well because you know you're kind of creating a sound that's adding a lot of atmosphere and as I often say reverb is great for kind of creating atmosphere because you're just you're just giving sounds an impact basically um, you're giving them a kind of a kind of law of space um, I'm sure there's a better way of phrasing that but I think that gets my point across so these reverb settings are uh, fine i'd adjust the size just a little bit for my track and maybe the width as well um but yeah it works pretty well so let's take a listen uh, turning it down obviously because that was horrible So I think that's actually a lot higher than the pitch was. Let's take a look. There you go. So um, there's lots of nice, nice motion in the sound, which um, I've been looking for lately. Uh, I think it just makes sounds a lot more exciting. And uh, again, it's it's quite flexible. If we take a look at the spectrum as I, as I play this here, you can see it does actually cover kind of everything. But, you know, if you wanted to low cut this, you just change the amount of sound you get in there. Again, you know, if I really wanted to cut away a lot of the content, it works pretty much wherever you want to cut it. Um, again, if I was to cut it in the high end though, Get slightly less of that uh, impacts. But the point here is that it's very flexible. Uh, and also, you know, when it comes to boosting parts of the spectrum, it might sound a bit uneven uh, if you're too extreme with the cues. But, uh, you know, it is a nice way of kind of making it stand out in your mix if you're having a problem with kind of lots of other synth sounds in your build-ups or whatever. Um, so, yeah, this is probably a great sound for kind of lots of drum and bass stuff. Um, some of the more kind of just high tempo dance genres and uh, maybe some other obscure stuff in between. Um, and as I say, it's a, it's a pretty basic sound. Uh, so I'm rambling now, so I'm going to end the video. Thank you for watching and uh, goodbye.